Um, so I was trained by Chris Ahrens, who said the most dangerous aneurysm was the four centimeter aneurysm, because if you didn't fix it, somebody else would. <laughs> well, I don't really believe in much medical management, like if you have an aneurysm. I'd go with Dr. Lumsden's talk and just fix it. Somebody else made these slides. Those of you who know me know I wouldn't ever put up a slide like this. Actually, I think Dolman might. Oh, yeah, there it is. Dolman made this slide. <laughs> Dolman would put up a slide like that and expect you to absorb it. Uh, I, needless to say, there is a lot of uh, mechanisms uh, from, a, from a translational standpoint uh, that are targeted therapies um, that I think are coming down the line. And if you think outside the box of uh, what future interventions uh, might come into play besides the usual uh, mechanical things that we do as vascular surgeons um, to fix things, you can imagine applying a lot of these um, uh, basic mechanisms, perhaps to some of the devices that we'll implant uh, to modulate the response to uh, degeneration of the aortic wall. And I think, uh, you know, multiple, certainly companies are looking into each of these various steps to find a way uh, to help improve those kinds of things. So just be aware of the idea, and, and certainly for the handful in the room that have a future basic science uh, career and or interest, uh, these are the types of things to be thinking about that do uh, get funded. So why medical management um, is to avoid an operation and to slow the progression of aortic aneurysm disease. I think the things that everybody knows about already uh, pertain to all types of vascular uh, problems, uh, including peripheral arterial disease, atherosclerosis, which I think are all the hallmarks of uh, aneurysm uh, problems. So smoking cessation, exercise, beta blockers, statins, ACE inhibitors, genetic counseling. I think each of these things has uh, some good evidence for it, has some not so good evidence, but I think in general no one would disagree that focusing on these things is part of the complete workup of a patient with an aneurysm. Smoking cessation, um, relative risk of having an event in known patients with, with aneurysms uh, in smokers was three to six fold higher. This was in both the UK small aneurysm trial as well as other uh, large multicenter trials. Outcomes for the smokers with and without intervention, need for re-intervention, need for actual intervention uh, was higher. So tobacco use really uh, is uh, the only sort of um, um, in the multivariate analysis independent risk factor for increased aneurysm expansion. So that's, this is older data, but certainly when you have somebody with a small aneurysm uh, that you're following, smoking cessation can be one of the um, uh, best uh, medical therapeutic things. Um, we certainly already know uh, that it um, has a significant impact on thoracoabdominal aneurysm. So separate from the usual infrarenal or juxtarenal aneurysms that we may follow, the um, thoracoabdominal and thoracic aorta also uh, shows a significant, uh, uh, significant relation to tobacco use. Exercise therapy. This was, this was the focus of Dr. Nallman's years of work on trying to see if, uh, in a randomized fashion, supervised exercise would actually <coughs> impede um, the progression of small, small abdominal aortic aneurysms, and certainly. Uh, over the years in the animal model uh, that has been shown to be the case. Um, a lot of the flow model work uh, uh, done out of Stanford in terms of, um, in terms of uh, a chain or a computational uh, modeling of how the aortic grows, uh, stress-induced stress changes in flow uh, that happen during exercise seem to uh, uh, slow down the, slow down the um, the, the actual growth, growth process, suggesting that uh, patients who lead a sedentary lifestyle, which is a lot of our vasculopaths, uh, seems to promote further aneurysm formation. Um, so here was some summary of some uh, slides on some of the animal models that had been done out of, out of the Dahlman lab that really uh, uh, did show in a randomized fashion that um, the the animals subjected to supervised exercise, running around on the hamster wheel, 
uh, uh, did slow the progression of the, the aneurysm model in them. And so uh, uh, this is uh, some data uh, related to that, that uh, the normal activity versus the exercise group, and following out um, in this elastase model uh, in um, uh, slowing down the process of aneurysm growth. And so uh, several years ago, um, uh, we had completed this uh, uh, study out of Stanford uh, with uh, what turned out to be 140 clinical patients with small aneurysms ranging between three and four and a half centimeters randomized to supervised exercise versus usual activity. Um, and subject to all the biases, just as I state, or you know, as I set up that clinical trial for you, you can understand all the potential um, uh, uh, sort of explanations for why uh, that it turned, you know, that it's, you know, these are hard studies to do when you're trying to focus on one, um, one small point to make a difference in it. But, it did turn out uh, in this study that the exercise folks, by um, uh, uh, measuring uh, maximal sagittal aortic diameter, um, that out to, out to three years, uh, there was a slowed slope of the growth of their small aneurysm. So really the first time that it showed that uh, in uh, humans. We also have looked at the, the, uh, the effects of exercise on uh, the flow and the stress to the wall in a whole separate series of work that we've done, um, really documenting that exercise is a very, very effective way to decrease uh, wall stress and tension. And these are, you know, these, these fancy images that are um, uh, some of our computational engineers uh, make uh, showing uh, significantly less shear stress on certain parts of the aorta uh, during during exercise. So here's some data uh, that basically the exercise group uh, grew at a 1.6 millimeter per year and the usual activity group grew at 1.8 millimeters a year without any um, influence on uh, danger or increased events from the group that was recommended to undergo much more exercise. And we had to document obviously they actually were doing the exercise and that the usual activity group wasn't doing just as much. that exercise decreased aneurysm expansion. The mechanism, well, so we thought it was a flow, uh, you know, a flow mediated thing that by having more cycles of that altered flow that it protected the wall from further degeneration. And, but that's all based on computational models rather than actual in situ models. So that's, that's the challenge uh, in studying these things. Um, okay, so that's smoking exercise beta blockers. Uh, have been shown in animal studies and a lot of retrospective analyses of uh, much of the data that are much of the uh, uh, long-term studies from the UK and stuff that we've seen and has been found to be associated with decreased aneurysm expansion. However, uh, several other randomized uh, trials have not uh, uh, borne that out. And I think as many people know, um, starting on beta blocker with a small aneurysm, if you're not already don't have another indication to be on a beta blocker, uh, makes patients feel actually quite worse. And it turns out, at least from six or seven years ago, when there was a big push towards preoperatively putting everybody on beta blocker, it turned out quite a bit of that data might have been, or might not have been as clean as we would have wished for. And I think, uh, in general, the general, uh, the the sort of consensus has been that we've been less aggressive pushing uh, beta blockade. But it's still out there as something. And so we know that it works for patients with acute dissection to decrease the DPDT to slow sort of aortic progression and growth in the acute phase. And certainly then you could, you could take the leap of faith and suggest that in the chronic de degenerative aneurysm state that it probably uh, has, some, uh, has some effect. Uh, certainly we do believe patients who already tolerate beta blockers probably uh, have better perioperative outcomes and improve long-term mortality if you look at large scale cardiology studies related to being on beta blockers. Uh, ACE inhibitors is another interesting thing. Um, uh, out of Canada, there was a large sort of population-based study showing um, that in patients presenting with ruptured aneurysms uh, compared to elective aneurysms, they were on a significantly uh, lower proportion of patients taking ACE inhibitors. However, when we've looked at the UK data, uh, sort of exploring this hypothesis was not borne out to be the case. There is some role perhaps in the basic science mechanism of how ACE inhibitors uh, work, 
and uh, there have been uh, some uh, post-histologic studies looking at uh, the amount of renin, angiotensin, and ACE within the walls that might suggest uh, that there is some effect of that. In general, I think the data is reasonable enough that in patients <coughs> with small aneurysms, if you were to choose an antihypertensive agent, um, uh, our own vascular medicine people have been recommending that first choice probably is an ACE inhibitor. There are multiple other reasons to start an ACE inhibitor, uh, you know, in somebody, so uh, I think this one's, this one's not that hard uh, to say. Uh, there was a lot of literature when I was in training about doxycycline, and that has kind of uh, um, uh, come up again. Um, and uh, over the years, there have been several randomized trial, uh, trials uh, showing that being on it could s slow expansion. Um, uh, in theory, because of uh, the activity against um, C. pneumonia, which is found within the aortic uh, wall and within the thrombus of patients with aneurysms, uh, we think uh, that there is some uh, side effect anti-inflammatory where it um, suppresses um, the expression of MMPs, which have been implicated in, uh, uh, you know, aneurysm degeneration. Um, there are significant side effects from being on doxycyclines, tetracyclines, et cetera. Um, and so people, patients need to know about that. Uh, there are some randomized trials coming down the pipeline. There have been a couple of Dutch studies uh, working on this, and, and right now in the U.S., um, uh, I think either we just completed or, or, or there's one that's still sort of actively uh, looking at enrolling patients uh, for various uh, forms of this. Uh, statins have been thought to perhaps have an influence. I think everybody recognizes and realizes statins are probably good for any vascular uh, patient, and there are some uh, uh, significant improvements in patients with aneurysms. However, nobody has uh, uh, thought to necessarily do the randomized uh, trial uh, for this because of so many other good effects of uh, somebody that's on a statin. And certainly in the large-scale trials population-wise, uh, uh, being on a statin reduces death from any cause, mainly cardiovascular uh, death. Um, there have been a role perhaps uh, particularly for TAAA uh, but again, these are all sort of preliminary population-based uh, uh, population studies. Uh, the less common reasons people develop aneurysms are related to what we talked about earlier, congenital disorders. Obviously, there are medical, uh, uh, medical ways to control some of the complications of these disorders, and that's where genetic counseling is, in, is, uh, you know, is advised. And then all the handful of things you'll get tested on a lot you need to be familiar with, Takayasu's giant cell, Bichette syndrome, where uh, typically anti-inflammatory treatments of these uh, uh, long-term. There's a lot of work right now on uh, using um, uh, sort of immune modulation to look at aneurysms. I think these are all things, again, for the folks that are interested in perhaps a science career uh, where uh, there is a significant amount of work uh, to be done on this. And so this is really the final slide. This is the status of current uh, trials, uh, uh, including uh, some anti-protease, anti-impulse hypertension, anti-inflammatory uh, studies, the statin studies, uh, and sort of immune modulation. None of these studies is uh, dramatically showing a difference yet, but again, these are the types of trials that take years and years to do. So just keep an eye out for these things as you read through the journal, uh, and uh, certainly for those interested in any kind of uh, long-term scientific uh, uh, venue and interest, I think uh, there's a lot to be worked on this. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Lee. Uh, next up is Dr. Lumsden.